What's going on, Grilla Grills Nation? How's everybody doing out there? Happy Friday to you. We're back again. Santa Claus hat and everything. Super excited today, actually. Um, we're going to be doing an awesome one. Simple one, but really cool. We'll be doing a whole New York strip loin, okay? Smoked, which has already been smoked. We'll talk about that process in a few minutes. And then reverse seared using both the Primate guys, and we also have the Kong cranked up. Also, we're going to be doing some smoked mushrooms. We're going to be utilizing the Silverback Force. So we literally have the Silverback, the Primate, and the Kong rock and rolling today. Also, we're going to kind of do a straight up ode to the mushroom, smoked mushrooms with a little bit of truffle oil, which also comes from mushrooms on the top. And we're going to be doing a mushroom-infused um, Manhattan today for you as well. So okay. it's all about the shrooms. Tell me if I'm like completely wrong right now, but d truffles are just mushrooms, right? Truffles are mushrooms, but they're like fancy mushrooms, they're like the okay. Royals Royce of mushrooms. Okay. So they grow underground, they have these special pigs that have to sniff them out, and they cost like nine billion dollars a pound, and they're really cool. Wait, is that like, you're not joking about the pig, right? That's, no, that's, that's a bunch of true pig. They actually train pigs to sniff these things out. I always thought that was a joke. No, no dude, it's a real deal. <laughs> All right, so there's people that can afford real truffles, and then there's me. I got truffle oil. So we're getting the same kind of taste, but we're going, uh, we're going a little bit, uh, a little bit other, the other way. I've right, actually had uh, hot sauce made by that same company. Oh, we're going to be no. utilizing that. We have some in the back there. I wanted to use this today. These guys do a great job. Talk about them more in a minute, too. We have some hot sauces. We'll totally bust that out at some point in the next couple of weeks. Now I'm excited. Booyah. And stay away from my desk, Dominic, because they're on my desk and I know you. You shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> All right, guys, a uh, couple cool things, and we're going to jump right in here. As always, we have our awesome Christmas sale going on right now, 25% uh, off all of our accessories, except for the pellets. Everything else, 25% off. And any time you make a purchase, guys, whether it's 3 bucks or God knows how much you spend, you get automatically entered into, in addition to the 25% off, automatically entered into a chance to win a grill of your choice from our awesome line here at Grill of Grills. All right? As long as you make that purchase in-store. In-store, correct. Got to do that in-store. And if you come in-store, guys, we'll be using this to make our drinks. We're going to give you an awesome uh, kind of a holiday mug, just kind of, or glass, or pint glass, whatever you want to call it. Pretty sweet, so we have that for you as well. All right, guys. Additionally, we're going to be working with certified Piedmontese beef today. Incredible stuff. They generously give us this pork or this uh, beef loin for us to play around with. They have some of our grills at their store. We love hanging out with them. We love doing this kind of thing with them. Um, incredible meat. I'll talk more about that in a second. But before I do, let's just go ahead and look at why this is so special. You guys ready for this? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get into it. So this is the whole strip loin here, guys. What makes certified Piedmontese so special is it's not overly marble. This meat is actually endorsed by the American Heart Association. It's not overly fatty. It's really, really good, grass-fed, incredible stuff. All right, but let's cut some big dukers of these steaks. Now, these steaks have been smoked for about an hour and a half to about 110 degrees, okay, as we can see there. Nice and rare in the middle. It's been rested completely out, so all those juices have reabsorbed. All right, so we're going to cut some pretty... We're going to cut some hunkers here, all right? The, obviously, the closer we get to this center, the more and more kind of rare we get. Now, oh, is there yeah. anything you can tell me about, like, this cut of meat in general? Like, the New York strip loin, where does it come from, and where did you get that name? So, it comes from, the, it literally comes from the loin, all right? Right by the tenderloin there. It's going to be right up in this area. All right, also, the name is what I think is super, uh, super cool. Now, the verdict is kind of out on this, to be 100% honest with you, but the most common story... The most common thing accepted, I should say, and look at how beautiful those things are, actually, before I get any further. Dang. And guys, just as all I did, a little bit of oil on the outside, salt, pepper, on the smoker, 275 degrees for about an hour and 20 minutes to 110 degrees, rest it out to about 120 degrees, as we can see how nice and rare those are, and then we're just going to turn around and sear them a couple minutes on each side. All right? But back to the name of these things before we throw them on. These guys got their name from the Delmonico Steakhouse in Lower Manhattan in New York City around the mid-1800s. So pretty cool stuff, right? One of the oldest, if not the oldest, restaurant in America, and the New York Strip got its name directly from them. So let's throw these bad boys on over here and get our sear going on while we work on everything else. So we have our primate going, guys. We are rocking a good, solid 700 degrees on here, all right? As we can see. Let that bad boy kind of what we call burp the grill when we first open it. We're looking at a good 700 degrees on this. As we can see, get that beautiful flame in there on our primate. Super, super good. And guys, let's go ahead and get started. 
All right, let's get these right down in the middle here. All right, we're just going to reverse sear these. They're already at rare. They already have some nice smoke on them. All right, really nice. Well seasoned on the outside. We're going to use some finishing salt in the very end, so we're not overly concerned with seasoning those right now. Okay? That was actually going to be my very next question. Yep. Do you need to hit the steak side of these with the... Uh, with any seasoning. Though. We're going to do that at the very end. Okay. Because right? this is so hot, we don't really want to burn some of that salt, and that can happen. We do have this outside kind of crust on there from the salt and pepper already. And we're going to do our very end, or our seasoning at the very, very end on these guys. All right. Other three big dukers here going right on the primate. Let's put a little oil down there first, shall we? All right. There we go. One more look at these steaks because they are just awesome. Dude, they're killer. They just do a great job. This is what a steak should be. Look at that. All right, no worries. All right, well, we're going to throw them down there anyway. There we go. Boom. Primate strikes again, and we're in there. All right, guys, this one's going super, super well. Let's give these guys a quick turn. And all we're really trying to do, guys, believe it or not, is we're just trying to get that sear, okay? These have already been cooked how we want them. All right? Let's come in this way. Let's come in this way. That is hot. There we go. Boom. Right on. Are you trying to get like the diamond marks on these? You can get diamond marks if you want to. I'm less as concerned about those in this instance, to be 100% honest with you. Um, and this is what I love about this primate too. It does get ripping hot and we get a really, really hard sear almost right away. Okay. So you want to be careful with that. So what's the difference between searing on a, a flat top like that and searing on the uh, grill? Great question. On the grill, great way to do it, okay? However, it's not going to be as uniform of a sear, okay? That's why I need this temperature to be so freaking hot. Over here, we have a flat top that literally gives it a uniform sear. It sears it directly across the plane, okay? So if we really want to talk about it, though this is an excellent way to do it and imparts a lot of flavor from the charcoal, if we're using this primate here with the two-thirds griddle or just a full griddle if you want, um, this is a great way to get this type of sear. So I was going to say, I can see that crust from here. I want to yep. see it. Yeah, there it is, brother. And don't be afraid of this, guys. This is what we want. That is exactly what we want. There's nothing to be afraid of, guys. We're just letting that thing do what it has to do. All right. The smell is just phenomenal. Yeah, and that crust is what it's all about. That is what it's all about, literally. So and a sear on the flat top, is that going to take you roughly the same amount of time as it does no, on the No, this uh, sear the on the flat top, especially, see, this is ready to rock and roll. This is ready to go, all right? We have that thing seared and ready. Your sear on the flat top is going to go exponentially faster than your sear on the, uh, on the conch. And that is okay. That is normal. And that would be the case in any grill that you're going to use, okay? Speaking of which, let's have a look at this. We're getting a great sear over here. Look at that. Yep. Yep. Flames licking up from all the juices coming off yep. that steak. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. That's exactly what we want, guys. Don't be afraid of this outer crust. You're not burning it. It's doing exactly what it is supposed to be doing. All right? Promise you. You can let those go for just another couple of minutes there, and we're all set. While those are finishing off, let's go ahead and jump on our mushrooms. This is super, super, super easy, guys. All right. First thing we do is we have some whole baby portobello mushrooms. All right? Do not chop them. These are exactly how we want them to be. You so can you if you want, but I would highly recommend not. Do you need to like wash these first or anything like that? You, you can wash them if the you want to. Um, I personally just throw them right in there. Could just, just all natural, literally. All right? A little bit of olive oil. All right, guys? We can use olive oil because we're only going to be smoking these at 275 degrees, so it's not going to burn the olive oil. It's totally cool. Oh, yeah. And guys, one other kind of quick thing to talk about here. Now you can kind of see the difference between the two steaks there, too. Totally. And this is a fine. This is a great sear, especially when we cut into these. You're going to see exactly what I mean. All right? Cool. So these are off the primate, and these guys here, right off the con. All right. Let those hang out. If you were done with everything else and you wanted to go ahead and cut into these, you totally could. All right? Usually I'm always kind of preaching about you got to rest, you got to rest, you got to rest. In this instant, guys, we already smoked this out to where this thing I let rest before we cut it into them into the reverse sear for about an hour, okay? Those juices have already come back in there. These are ready to rock and roll right now. But let's finish this and we'll do that, all right? So we have some olive oil. 
generous amount, guys. These mushrooms tend to soak up quite a bit. Salt and pepper, copious amount as usual. All right. And then a little bit of dried thyme. Okay. I recommend dry thyme in this instance, not fresh. Fresh will be fine. I just recommend the dry. Sticks better. It's going to take on that smoke a little, handle that smoke a little bit better in the smoker because these are going to go again at 275 for about 45 minutes to an hour. All right. And then just for a tiny touch, if you want to, not necessary, just a little bit of red pepper flake for a little bit of spice, guys. Just a little bit. We don't want too much. All right. That's an ingredient that I've been using a lot more lately. It's I know. something that I kind of got away from for a while. I used it too much. And then over this last month or so, I've started using red pepper flakes all the time. And dude, like I was saying, these mushrooms love drinking up that olive juice or that olive oil. They really do. So you're going to have to really get in there. I actually had to put three applications of oil in there before we got it how we wanted it. We can get in there and see. Seasoned whole baby portobello mushrooms. Button mushrooms are fine, but about this size if you want to leave them whole. All right. 275 degrees for about 45 minutes or so, and that bad boy is ready to go. Now, let's have a look at some final stuff, and then let's make some cocktails, because it is Friday, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we have our mushrooms here at the very end. Nice and rustic, classic, classic, classic steakhouse side. And okay? how long did you say you cooked those for again? 45 minutes at 275. Right on. Some whole torn parsley, all right? It's a very kind of rustic way to do it, but I think it looks really nice, all right? Just tear it right off, okay? Get in there. Leaves, not stems? No, you can do anything. Oh, I, okay. I got a couple stems in there, too, but yeah, we're trying for the leaves, obviously, but if you get a couple stems in there, we're not worried about it. This is a really rustic dish. Last but not least, guys, a touch, touch, touch of this truffle oil. Remember, if you're using this kind of stuff, a little goes a very, very, very long way. Mushroom right? on mushroom. Yep, mushroom on mushroom on mushroom, and we're making cocktails with mushrooms. That's how it's going today. All right, got our mushrooms. Let's cut into some steak, shall we? Let's try this bad boy right here. See how we did. All right, look at that. Perfect. Certified Piedmontese strikes again. Our grills, of course, strike again. And guys, as we're looking through here, I want you to notice it's not overly marbled, okay? That is not the sign of a bad steak. In fact, in this case, it's a sign of a great steak. It's super lean, packed full of flavor, okay? We can literally taste all of that grass-fed flavor coming through there, all right? So that's one that we're going to have coming off of the primate, and let's check this bad boy off of the Kong, see how we did on both. Same again. Look at that. Spot on perfect, all right? And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. I'm going to slice up a couple more of these. And I'm not sure if you can hear this from there, guys. But when I'm slicing into this meat, there's a really nice kind of crunch to it. Okay? That's that awesome, awesome outer bark, outer layer that we got from that delicious, beautiful sear. Okay? Coming off both of those grills there. All right? Let's go ahead and slice into a couple more. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to do two more. Now, this is something that you could actually do for Christmas, right? I mean, oh. there's a lot of people who like to do the ham, the turkey. That's all been done. But, you know, if you don't want to go for that giant rib roast or, or go for that big cut of meat, this is a perfect way that you can kind of hit a happy medium of getting a real nice beef recipe out for the family. Totally. And you know what, guys? That kind of reminds me. That's going to be kind of our focus for the next couple of weeks. We did a ton of turkey and all that good stuff for you for Thanksgiving. We wanted to make sure you had some tools in the tool shed there for that. But we're going to kind of go beef this month. We're going to be doing a standing rib roast coming up soon. At my house, everybody, instead of serving turkey on Christmas, I actually make beef wellington. That's going to be coming up soon, too. So you're going to see a lot of cool stuff coming up with beef. We're going to do a standing rib roast probably next week. A lot of cool ideas for the holidays. Very decadent, very delicious stuff. But here we go. Really cool around the holiday season. All right. Speaking of this, let's cut into this guy one more time. We talked about earlier, we didn't season that up all the way. All right, look how perfect that came out, every single one of them. Now, the last thing we're going to do, guys, and that is just a whole bunch of meat. And that's just going to show you. That is six steaks that came out of those loins, about half an inch a piece, really nice, thick, beautiful steaks. Every single one of them, through this method, through the smoking on the uh, silverback, 
and then searing on the Kong and the primate has come out to a perfect rare to medium rare. Okay? It's Every really single one. cool to see how consistent it was. That's why I decided to just go ahead and cut all of these open so you could see. This is six steaks. This is a whole loin. Every single one of these pieces is spot on. Okay, So this method really does work. Last thing we're going to do is that seasoning we talked about. A little bit of sea salt right over the top. Okay, If you don't have any sea salt, it's fine. You can put a little kosher salt right over the top. This happens to be some sea salt that we bought just here at the local grocery store, and I threw it on the smoker for about an hour so it smokes sea salt. You can totally do that at home, too. Very simple. You want to throw it uh, onto a sheet tray, throw it right in the smoker, one hour at 225 degrees, infuse that flavor, and you have it. And for our point of reference, guys, I saved this one end piece, okay? That was before our sear, okay? And this is after. And the difference is right there. Look at that crust. Nothing wrong with this, but this is much, much better, okay? This is a two-part thing. The smoking is very important, and the sear is very important. And just when you think you've burned it, look at this. When you cut into it, and you've got that char on the outside, that's when you know you nailed it, okay? It doesn't look burnt anymore. It looks perfect. All right, guys, there it is. Done, done, done. Got our mushrooms with our truffle oil. Got our killer steak over there. I think lunch around these parts is going to be pretty good today, brother. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, and now we're kind of mushrooming up. We're going to make some mushroom cocktails. Now, I did a mushroom infused uh, old-fashioned for you guys uh, in the last couple of months. This is that same whiskey. I have the recipe for a mushroom infused whiskey under the cocktail section at grillagrills.com. Check it out. It's all there for you. Additionally, I have a recipe for a Manhattan on the exact same section at grillagrills.com. All you got to do, guys, <coughs> make your mushroom infused whiskey, turn around, Go ahead and go to that Manhattan section, use that whiskey in the place of uh, the regular whiskey on the Manhattan, and there you go. So there's two recipes that will get you through this if you want to try it. It's actually pretty cool and very simple. First thing we're going to do, guys, is use a little bit of this. All right. There we go. One, two. Got Dominic, my brother here. I got to get him in the mix, too. There's a couple ounces, about two ounces here of our mushroom infused whiskey. I've got Dominic here, so we're going to do four. A couple of these bad boys. All right. And then just because we're Grilla Grills, one more. One more, for, one more for the Grinch. The Grinch that never stole Christmas because he drank too much uh, mushroom infused whiskey. All right. <laughs> here we go, guys. A little bit of red vermouth here. About an ounce and a half total. What is vermouth? Vermouth is red wine that's been infused with botanicals. Oh. By botanicals, I just mean like herbs. Okay. Okay. A little bit sweeter as well. Does have some sugar additive to it, but it is essentially, it's a great aperitif. It was not actually invented to go into a cocktail. It was invented to be taken before, uh, before your meal, actually. It's kind of an appetite. Yeah. Get or go or er. All right. All right, guys, so we have our sweet vermouth in here. We have our mushroom-infused whiskey. We're going to put some Angostura bitters, about three dashes per six total because we got Dominic with us. So one, two, three for me. One, two, three for Dom. There we go. And last but not least, guys, we're going to take a maraschino cherry. I got these local. We use these recently. Super, super good. And what I like to do, check this out, is I like to get in there. But make sure with my bar spoon, I'm getting a little bit of that extra syrup to go on the bottom of that glass. That really kind of adds to it at the very end. Yeah, that's what you want. Just like that. All right? Really, really nice. Let's get this out of the way. And then, guys, we're just going to put some ice in here. Give it a nice stir. And we're in business. All right? So, again... Angostura bitters, sweet vermouth, our mushroom-infused whiskey. If you're like, I don't want any mushroom-infused whiskey. I don't even like mushrooms. That's cool, too. Just use regular whiskey, and all will be well. All right, guys, as always, we're going to stir this for about 10 seconds to make sure we get that amount of water in there that we want and need for the cocktail. And, guys, while I'm stirring this, something kind of cool coming up, all right? I'm actually, after we finish up here today, I'm going to jump on a plane and fly to Philadelphia. Okay, looking forward to it. Got some things that need to be done there. But while I'm there, guys, I'm going to be there Monday afternoon. And Grilla Grills is going to Geno's, and we're going to pass. And we're going to settle the dispute once and for all, who's got the best cheesesteak, who came up and invented the Wiz. Which person actually, which store actually started to put the Wiz on there. We're going to figure out which one is best. We're going to settle this whole thing, Grilla Grills style, from Philadelphia. 
going to go to Geno's, it's going to give him a pat, and it's going to be freaking awesome. All right, so join me. I don't know exactly when, all right, but let's just say lunchtime to mid-afternoon, I will be hitting you guys up from Philly, all right? We got that. You can kind of see that kind of cloud in it, can't you? It's a little bit cloudy, whereas when you see a normal Manhattan, it's not quite as much. Mm -hmm. That's from that mushroom infusion. Okay, we took dry mushrooms and some thyme and left that steep in that whiskey uh, for a minimum 48 hours, but up to a week. Okay, and that's where that uh, kind of color is coming from. Last thing we're going to do, guys, if you do add fruit to a Manhattan, you typically want to add an orange, but I feel that the lemon works better with the mushrooms and the thyme, so we're going to do that. And there's our drink. You got to have a little cheers for everybody. Happy holidays to you. Love y'all out there. Have a great weekend. Be safe. See you guys Monday from Philadelphia. It's killer. Oh, so good. It's got its own thing going on. All right, guys. Oh, so coming up next week. Hey, us up. We're going to have our Christmas around the world coming back at you guys. There's always great specials here. Check out our website, grillofgrills.com. Have a lot of great content for you. Some from off-site, the Christmas around the world, all that great stuff. Check out these guys at Certified P Montees. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff, awesome stuff, okay? We love y'all. Own the smoke. Have a great weekend as always, guys. Please, please, please be safe. That's all we ask. And we'll see you guys next week from Philadelphia, bright and kind of late slash early on Monday. Cheers, everybody. Have a good weekend.